having said that, when it comes to political stability, geopolitical stability, always the basis for the economic development. So I would like to ask you one question, uh, Prime Minister Anwar. I think you have visited Qatar for international conference, and uh, you mentioned you met the Hamas leaders. Uh, so the current Gaza situation, uh, from your perspective, what is your understanding about the uh, Gaza situation? Well, the Gaza situation happens to be humanitarian crisis of an unprecedented scale. Let us view this in this context. Never mind the differences in terms of ideology, of bilateral relations with other state. But can we, in this period and age, condone and keep a blind eye towards massive atrocities? We can go on discussing what happened on the 7th of October, but do not erase seven decades from the period of the Nakba of dispossession, of land being taken, houses being demolished, and people being killed. So that is why I have asserted in the speech that we go for a peaceful resolution, support the position taken by the neighbors, Muslim countries and the international community, force those parties to attain peace, then accept a two-state solution. But what is critical now is stop the killings of children, women. And I find great difficulty. I, I, I must state this, uh, that people can talk about uh, a political crisis and be blinded by the fact that daily you see children, women, civilians, hospitals, schools, mosques and churches being destroyed. And be hardly uh, committed or have the courage to say anything. So I thank uh, Prime Minister Kishida and the Japanese government. At least now, you call for cessation of hostilities and ceasefire. You increase humanitarian assistance to Gaza and the Palestinian cause. That she that the human character and, and, and compassion is present. Uh, so that's all that we are calling. Even in the issue of um, um, Russia and Ukraine, we have to engage to the, the criticism that Anwar, why did you meet Hamas leaders? I'm asking you, why did you meet Mandela those days? He was a terrorist called by the apartheid leaders. But by the Africans, they call him a national hero. Now, the world calls him a national hero. But those days, remember, the West called him a terrorist. The IRA were all terrorists. So, we may have differences in that. But engage. What did I do with the Hamas leaders? Yes, I know them. I've known them for decades. There's no reason why I should not meet them. But when I met them, what did I say? I said, please, respect the decision of your neighboring countries and try to secure peace, return hostages in exchange for the prisoners in Israel, and accept a two-state solution. Is that an offense? Did I promote terror? No. Did I recognize uh, host, uh, violence? No. I appeal because I have an advantage. What is my advantage? I know them. And they consider me a friend. A duty as a friend is to convey what is best in the interest of the Palestinians to secure a peaceful resolution. Arigato gozaimasu.
はいありがとうございます Thank you very much So,、uh, as for Gaza, especially for the Biden administration, even for the Americans, they criticize what the, uh, uh, they are doing. So, now moving on to the America,、uh, what do you think of the American、uh, attitude towards that problem? Well,、um, you can see right now the seismic shift within the United States. You see the students、uh, uprising or calling for justice and compassion, reminiscence of what happened during the Vietnam War. So it was not monolithic、uh, United States because you can see the seismic shift.、Um, you, you can see intense debate.、Um, so I think it's a new beginning. But I'm It's unfortunate that the United States is not using all its might, influence, and resources to call for an end to the killings. I mean, that's all they were asking.、Um, they may be a supporter of Israel, that's not my concern, that's their decision. But we just say, look, how can you condone? This genocide or apartheid or ethnic cleansing, and how you deny that when the whole world can see an entire city being completely devastated, hospitals, churches, mosques. So that's all that we want the international community. And I think、uh, in this regard, I must say that Japan has now consistently in their vote in the United Nations, recognition of the state, in their call for. And to the conflict and in the support for humanitarian crisis is an important departure from a more sort of guarded policy in the past. So I, I certainly welcome that. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. So, U.S. have not utilized its influential power to the most, and that I think is a very important point. From the Asia's perspective, U.S. And also China on the other side. There are conflicts, and it's at the forefront、uh, of this conflict. So, in terms of、uh, the large continent, the competition, severe competition between US and、uh, China, Malaysia, and ASEAN, how do you need to establish yourself a position, and what will be some approaches that you need to take? The United States、um, has been our traditional ally from the beginning, from the time we. Achieve our independence in 1957. And I have said cumulatively, it is still the largest investor and trading partner in Malaysia. And now, until today, they continue to be very aggressive in the promotion of their investments. All the big players in the United States are welcome. At the same time, we recognize there is a growing. Economically and、uh, militarily, of China and its important neighbor. I do not share this China phobia policy.、Um, whilst I maintain excellent relations with the United States,、uh, Japan, Korea, I think for Malaysia, for the region, it is better to continue to engage with China.、Uh, our hope is that、uh, China, United States can resolve its differences. And the United States do not remain to be too protective and respect competitiveness, but that's for their leaders and policy makers to decide. But for us, at least, we say we will continue to engage and consider the United States as an important ally and at the same time enhance our collaboration with China, who is an important neighbor, too close, too important, too strategic to ignore. Uh, so I think that is the position. Well, they, say, they talk about South China Sea, they talk about some other issues of concern. Yes, but we use the Hedgewick forums. We have differences with, with the United States, but it does not necessarily mean that we should、uh, severe our relations. In the same manner with China, with China, South China Sea, we should engage. In fact,、um, I, when I assume the chairmanship of ASEAN, I would call for ASEAN countries to, to, to take a common position so that multilaterally we can engage with our neighbors. Including China to find、uh, an amicable resolution to the differences. So I take that position. 
Um, we are fiercely neutral. Nobody, no country should dictate. And we decide what is best for our country. We accept it is a relatively small country, an emerging economy, and now vibrant. It will be able to attract investments and trade. So we do not need to, therefore, um, be part of any um, interest uh, or, I see, the Cold, Cold War mindset, but instead take this new position, new Asia, into consideration. Thank you, Your Excellency. So, in the context, the Asia and the world uh, is now watching uh, the U.S. Elect uh, presidential election in November. So, if Trump, President Trump, is going to re-emerge as a uh, president, there's, he's going to meet a very hard-lining approach to China. So after the U.S. election in November, the United States, from the Asian perspective, what are the expectations or the concerns that we do have after the U.S. election? Do you have any that you can share with us? Of course, uh, a number of countries, not only in Asia, I was in Europe, I was in the Middle East, people are a bit concerned about the exhortations and uh, of, of uh, the candidates, uh, which includes uh, Donald Trump. Uh, we hope that therefore he would be able to shape in the event he wins the elections. He takes a position that uh, is an important uh, player in the, national, at the international stage and therefore take into consideration the need for peace, security, and economic development. Now, um, having said that, well, you, you alluded to the, the, the issues that of, of concern, yes. Having said that, I'm back to my original focus. What is it? That we have, therefore, to, have, to build this cohesive ASEAN, enhance our trade, solidify our strength, and then collaborate with the countries in the region, uh, and with other friendly countries. Uh, and I think uh, our imperative is still, well, although this moral imperative cannot be denied, we talk about humanitarian concerns, about justice, about equality, but economic imperative should be the focus. And um, I think the United States, whatever said and done, would also require uh, international cooperation because that would uh, eventually uh, help uh, the economic development of the United States. But the United States, like China, is a huge country. It's not a monolith. I mean, you have weaknesses here, they can rebound elsewhere. You know, I don't share the view that it's going to decline economically. I mean, it has, it has a robust economy, it has its strength, uh, technological strength, AI, etc. But um, there's no way any country, for that matter, can ignore the importance of uh, globalization international trade and I, we just hope that uh, both either Biden or Trump would accept this new realities it's not uh, United States in the 50s or in the 60s or in the 70s it's the United States in the 2020s and things have changed they have seismic shift in the global power play um, countries more countries are exercising their more independent uh, view other than being part of a Cold War sort of a grouping. Thank you very much. So one more, I think, question I would like to ask is regarding China. Uh, South China Sea, center around the South China Sea issue. The, the expansionism, hegemony in China is uh, getting quite strong. And two years ago, China is now seeing a decline in population. So they are now in a structural sort of a recession that is being told. So China, in terms of expanding their presence, at the same time, the little sluggishness in the growth economically, how would that impact the region overall in your country? Is, um, particularly the huge economies, major economies, from historical antecedents. United States was in a period of decline, rebound, decline a little, sluggish a little, rebound a lot. So this would happen, of course, to China. 
because the ingenuity of the people, the preparedness of uh, the leadership to, to, to adjust to what is um, critical for their country. And I think I don't uh, need to uh, underestimate that. Uh, you see Japan in the same, same, same light. So I would see that it's not a structural recession. Yes, there is sluggishness, there are problems they have to deal with, um, but it's still robust. Um, they are still aggressive in terms of the foreign investments, including to Malaysia and ASEAN. And um, I, I therefore um, am not too particularly concerned about the, uh, cons uh, the, the talk about structural recession. About the issue of uh, slight declining, you are talking about 1.2, 1.4 billion. Slight uh, decrease in uh, population. I don't think you should worry anyone. I would say that it's something that we welcome. I think most countries which are overpopulated should slowly decline in their population. But, but uh, I, do, I fail to understand why people are overly concerned about it. I mean, Japan has gone through that. People have said uh, Japan as Vogels, uh, Japan is number one, and probably number now, number two, number three. We we'll come back to number two. I mean, it depends on how we steer, navigate our economies. And uh, if in that case, um, China should be able to uh, navigate and make the necessary adjustments. Right now, it is somewhat sluggish, yes, but it's far from a structural recession. So, South China Sea. Now, China is still expanding. Uh, what do you think of their expansionist view? Well, this is, of course, the perception that we receive. Now, without prejudice, without being either pro or anti or China, we in Malaysia do not have this problem. Yes, there are uh, claims, yes. But we negotiate. As I said, and I would reiterate this point, with all our neighbours, we have some problems. Minor problems with Singapore, with Thailand. But we have excellent relations. In fact, relations with our neighbours are much better now than ever before. But do we resolve all the issues of conflicts? No. I mean, similarly, with Japan, we may have uh, some differences in policies. But my relations, personal relations with Prime Minister Kishida and Japan, I mean, it's... To me, we're trying to do better than ever before. Uh, similarly, with China, yes, there are claims, but resolution must be on a multilateral basis, must be based on UNCLOS. We made very clear there's no compromise when it's over of inter national integrity, uh, territorial integrity of our uh, country, and there is no way we're going to concede in any way, although we can be considered a small country. But please be assured that I personally, in all my years, contact which is getting closer also in our bilateral relationship with China, have not encountered a single sort of a, a problem vis-a-vis -vis the issue of this conflict. This was raised and we raised, we communicate, we uh, issue that we agree and we disagree, but we will have to deal with it. We have to have, again, multilateral mechanisms and, and I said earlier that once I assume the um, chairmanship ASEAN, I would want ASEAN to be more cohesive in taking a common position to engage with America as a great friend and ally uh, with uh, Japan, Korea and more so with China as a major economy. So we take this more uh, neutral at the same time uh, focusing on the economic imperative. Yes, there are differences, but they must use all the international mechanisms, multilateral mechanisms, and UNCLOS to resolve specifically on the issues of the South China Sea. Hi, Thank you very much. There are so many other questions, but I think that the uh, it has come to the uh, time. So, uh, Prime Minister Anwar, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Difficult questions. Very, very interesting. Yeah, thank you so much.